Lord coming from the book of Psalms, chapter number 100. It says, Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name for the Lord is good. Can you say amen to that? And his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. You know, today is the day that we get to gather corporately in the presence of Almighty God and worship him. And it doesn't matter how your week was. It doesn't matter if it was great, if it was lousy or whatever in between. God is good. And he's worthy to be praised. Let's give him a clap praise. Stand with me this morning. Stand with me this morning. We're going to go before the Lord in a word of prayer, and then we're going to worship the God Almighty. Let's pray. Father, thank you for today. Thank you for allowing us to be gathered in your house. Be with us as we worship you, Lord, from this very first note to the very final amen. Lord, be glorified. We shout this morning for joy because you are worthy. We'll give you thanks and we'll give you praise for it all. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said, Amen. 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 I was buried beneath my shame Who could carry that kind of weight It was my tomb Till I met you I was free Your mercy has saved my soul. Aren't you glad? Hallelujah. Now your freedom is all that I know. The old made new. Jesus, when I met you, you called my name and I ran out of that grave. My sin was heavy, but chains break at the weight of your glory. I needed shelter, I was an orphan. Now you call me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you were my healing. Now your love is the air that I'm breathing. I have a future, my eyes are open. Cause when you call my name,
go back and do that bridge. I needed shelter. Hallelujah. Come on, church. Listen, we needed rescued. Our sin was heavy. It was a separation between us and God. And Jesus came. It doesn't matter if you're online. It doesn't matter if you're in person. Jesus came and paid the debt that we couldn't. Let's sing that. It says, I needed rescue. My sin was heavy. But hallelujah, Jesus came. Let's sing that together. I needed rescue, my sin was heavy. Chains break at the weight of your glory. I needed shelter, I was an orphan. Now you call me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you were my healing. Now your love is the air that I'm breathing. I have a future, my eyes were open. And when you called my day when we ran out of that grave because of what Jesus did. Amen. Hallelujah. The splendor of the King clothed in majesty let all the earth rejoice He wraps himself in light and darkness tries to hide and trembles at his voice and trembles at his voice. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. again. How great is our God? How great is our God? Sing with me how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. Sing that one more time. How great is our God? Above all names, he's the name above all names, worthy of all praise. My heart will sing, how great is our God. Sing that again, you're the name above all names. You're the
sing that again. Tell him he's the name above all names. You're the name above all names. You are worthy of all praise. My heart will sing how great is our God. How great is our God. How great. again how great worship him this morning church he's worthy how great is our God sing with me how great is our God and all will see how great how great is our God you guys keep playing that for just a moment church take a moment close your eyes whether you're in your living room or in your kitchen or you're here in the sanctuary, take a moment and offer him a word of praise. Offer, tell him how great he is. Tell him how wonderful he is. Tell him how thankful that you are. Take a minute in your own words and give him praise this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're great, God. We worship you, Lamb of God. You're worthy of our praise. You're worthy of our praise, God. You're a great God. You're a great God. Jesus, we worship you this morning. It doesn't matter what I've gone through, you're worthy. It doesn't matter what's ahead, you're worthy. Oh, you're worthy. Sing, how great is our God. How great is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God. And all will see how great. the voices. How great is our God? How great is our God? Sing with me. How great is our God? And all will see how great, how great is our God. Oh, Father, we worship you this morning. You're worthy of our praise, dear Lamb of God. You're worthy of our praise. You're so worthy, God. You know, the, the word instructs us, church, that God inhabits the praise of his people. He really is here. He's here right now. He's, he's, he's moving in and out of the seats. He's moving in your living room. He's moving in your kitchen. Wherever you are, God is there. He's, he's here. And we need to worship him because he's worthy. We don't ever want to be people that are guilty of worshiping God just because everything's gone our way. He's answered the prayer. He's, if things have just worked out the way we wanted them to, no, God's worthy of our praise when everything goes wrong. God's worthy of our praise when we get the worst of news. When, when you're rebounding out of something that maybe was difficult and it seems like you get knocked back down and it's easy to point a finger and blame, but no, God's worthy all of the time. When he's moving, whether you realize it or not, whether you know it or not, whether you believe it or not, that's the God that's here this morning, working in our lives, changing us, molding us, drawing us us unto himself. Listen, he already knows you in and out, left and right, up and down. He, he knows you better than you know yourself. But we need to experience more of him. And he is here this morning. Allow him to minister to your heart. Put aside the, the garbage of this past week. Put aside the anxiety of what's to come this week. And in this moment, Allow the Lord of Lords, the, the King of Kings, the God above all gods to minister to your heart. Hallelujah. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here. Thank you. 
Let's sing that again. You are here. You are here. He's the way maker. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. That feel it you're working you never stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop working even when i don't see it you're working even when i don't feel it you're working you never stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop working even when i don't see it you're working when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. Come on, church. Even when you don't see him. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never 
stop, you never stop working. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. That is who you are. God's work in church, God's work in right now, I just sense the, the Holy Spirit is moving. And, and, and just because you don't see it, just because you don't feel it doesn't mean it's not happening. I want you to just close your eyes right where you are. If you're watching at home, if you're here in the sanctuary, would you just close your eyes? Lord, your word is true. We stand on your word by faith because you said you're working all the time. You said you don't stop. And so, Father, we're standing on that because even if we don't feel it, you're working. Even if we don't see it, God, you are working. We're going to sing that again in just a moment, but as we do, Listen, make that your declaration. Even when I don't see it, God, I know you're working. Even when I don't feel it, and listen, it's good to feel it, but even if we don't feel it, he's working because his word says he's working. God wants to do mighty, mighty things this morning, church, and we will need to allow him to do in our hearts what he desires to do. So let's sing that. And if, even if you're struggling, even if you are just, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm having a tough time, right now is the breakthrough. Because God, I'm believing your word, even though I don't see it, I don't feel it, I don't sense it. And as we do that, I believe he's just going to pour it out. So let's just worship him this morning as we make this declaration. don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop. Come on, church. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop. Even when I don't see it. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. That is who you that is who you are. That is who you are. That is who you are. Tell them. That is who you are. 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 Tell them one more time. That is who. That is who you are. 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 Come on, tell them again. That is who you are. 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 Oh, Jesus.
Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. You're so worthy. You're so worthy. You're worthy in this place this morning. You're worthy in this place this morning. Worthy in this place this morning, Father. You're worthy. Come on, church. Just take a moment. The quietness of this moment. Tell him he's worthy. You're worthy. Jesus. saints and angels they bow before your throne all the elders cast their crowns before the Lamb of God and sing all the saints Night and day, let incense 
arise. You are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the of it all. You are worthy of it all. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve glory. Your praise, your worship is a fragrant offering unto the Lord. It really is. That's why we sing day and night, night and day. Let incense, let, let worship, let praise arise. Your worship isn't just what we're doing right now through song. Your worship is how you live your life. Your worship is how you respond to your spouse or your coworker or your neighbor when they irritate you. Your worship is how you interact with others. Your worship is what you think. Your worship is how you respond. Your worship is everything. Everything we do is unto the Lord. Day and night, night and day, let incense arise. Let worship arise. Let praise arise. That's what we're singing. So we're going to do that bridge again, day and night, night and day. So if you guys want to get started with some music, something or other. But listen, that, that's what we're singing. And so, Lord, it's not just the song that we're singing in the moment. It's, it's our life. Your worship is a fragrant offering unto the Lord. Sometimes that word worship throws us off. We, we think song, song, song. That's just a piece. So let's worship him, not just with our words, not just with our melody right now, but worship him from the depth of your heart. Worship Him like you really believe with every fiber of your being that He is worthy. Yes, God. Yes, sing that with me, day and night. And day and night, night and day, let incense arise. Day and night, night and day, let incense arise. Day and night, night and day, let incense arise. Day and night, night and day, let incense arise. Day and night, night and day, let incense arise. so worthy you are worthy of it all you are worthy of it all for from you are all things and to you are all things you deserve the glory just the voices, you're worthy. You are worthy of it all. You are 
worthy of it all. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. Almighty God, we worship you this morning. Worship you this morning. Worship you this morning, Lamb of God. You're worthy. You're so worthy. Mighty God. Mighty God. Mighty God. Mighty God. We just take a moment and we bask in your presence. You really are here. It's not just something we sing about. It's not just something that we try to make up. But Lord, your word says that you're here. And so we know by faith that you're here. Because you said so, and you don't go back on your word. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Jesus. Now, Father, as we get ready and transition into your word, your spirit is not going anywhere. Your Holy Spirit is staying right here. So continue to minister to our heart. Draw us even closer as we get into your word and change us. What you have begun, you don't stop because the singing stops. Getting in your word is another way that we worship you, Father. And so change us today. Draw us, build us, strengthen us, encourage us. And Lord, we give you thanks, we give you praise, because you are worthy. And we pray all these things in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody said, give him a clap offering, he's worthy. Amen. Wave to somebody, even if you've already sat down, turn, or, turn around and wave to somebody. Let them know that you're glad to see them today. I know it's different, but it's all good. It's all good. If you're new to Life Spring, welcome. It's so nice to have you here. We're glad that you chose to worship with us. And you just pray that God will continue to do what He desires to do in your heart and your mind and in your life. And so... Uh, Anyway, if you don't have a church home, we'd love for you to uh, join us at LifeSpring, whether it's in person or online. So take out your Bible today and uh, turn with me to the New Testament book of Hebrews. New Testament book of Hebrews, and we're studying the faith chapter, chapter number 11. The faith chapter, chapter number 11. We want to connect with you this week, so don't forget we post a devotional on Tuesdays to our Facebook page. We have a, a, a Zoom video get-together on Thursdays, and that link is posted to our Facebook page at uh, Thursdays at 7, so we'd love to connect with you during the week. Thank you for your giving. We appreciate that. More importantly, God knows, and He loves a cheerful giver. That's what His Word says, so we want to encourage you to continue to give. You can't outgive God. You can't outgive God. Your giving is another act of worship. And that's not a plea for money, that's just the reality. Our giving as we give unto the Lord is another act of worship. And uh, if you've been giving online, we ask that you continue to do that. If you brought an offering today, there's a black box that's going to be uh, right, out, right by the door on your way out. And you can just drop your, your tithe or your offering in that. We appreciate that so much. Hebrews chapter 10, verse number 38 says, But my righteous one will live by faith. My righteous one will live by faith. Remember, righteousness, uh, a righteous one means someone who is in right standing with God. 
If you have called upon the Lord Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior, ask Him into your life for the forgiveness of your sin, you are the righteous one that the writer of Hebrews is talking about. Not because you deserve it, not because you've earned it, but because, you, but because you've called upon the name of the one who allows us to be in right standing, Jesus Christ. That's, that's good news, church. I can't achieve that on my own. I can't do that on my own. I'm not good enough no matter how hard I try, no matter how many times I get into church, no, how, no matter how many times I read my Bible. I can't do it. But with the help of the Holy Spirit, with Jesus Christ in the center of my heart, He makes me in right standing because of His shed blood. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Smith Wigglesworth said this, great faith is a product of great fights. Great testimonies are the outcome of great tests, and great triumphs can only come out of great trials. Great faith is a product of great fights. Great testimonies are the outcome of great tests, and great triumphs can only come out of great trials. Trials. So many times you and I want the path not just to be straight, but we want it to be paved. We want it to be with gold bricks. We want it to be with the shiny sun. We want no bumps. We want no detours. We don't want any of that. We just want it nice and easy. But if it was that way, we wouldn't need to rely on God. And so these things happen so that we can see God so that we can call on God, and so that we can put our trust, confidence, and faith in God. Last week we talked about what faith is. Verse number one says it's the faith, faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. Verse number three, by faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command so that what we Excuse me, so that what is seen is not made out of what is visible. God did not take a pile of rocks and create stuff. God spoke into the nothingness, and boom, it was. I've got a pile of rocks in my backyard, just stuff that we've been digging up and we've been, you know, finding around, and so just put it in the pile. And you can take that pile and you can make all sorts of stuff if you wanted to. That's not what God did. He didn't find a rubble. He didn't find a heap. He didn't find anything. He spoke and it was. That's the God that you and I serve. It's the God that you and I serve. But today we're going to look at verse number 4 in Hebrews chapter number 11. And it says this, by faith, say faith. Even you at home, say faith. Everybody, faith. Faith. Abel offered God a better sacrifice than Cain did. By faith, say faith, faith. He was commended as a righteous man when God spoke well of his offerings. And by faith, say faith, He still speaks, even though he is dead. Lord, this is your word today. And you said that when your word goes forth, it would not return void. It would not return empty. But as it goes out, you would accomplish in man's heart what you desire to be accomplished. So Lord, today accomplish in my heart what you desire to be accomplished, for those in person, in their heart, for those watching online, their heart, for those that are watching this later in the week or even in the month, in their heart, because that's what your word says. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I want to read that same verse to you, but in a different translation. I want to read it to you in the New Living Translation, and it says this, it was by faith that Abel brought a more acceptable offering to God than Cain did. Abel's offering gave evidence that he was a righteous man, and God showed his approval of his gifts. Although Abel is long dead, he still speaks to us 
by his example of faith. This word faith we've taken a look at and we dissected it two weeks ago pretty in depth, but I'm just going to take a a minute and a half and just one more time for us. The Greek word for faith here is pistis and it's got a three-part meaning. It means a moral conviction of truth, the reliance upon Christ for our salvation and consistency in our profession. This word faith is much deeper, I think, than sometimes we give it credit for. We just think, well, if we believe God, that's enough. But really, faith is so much deeper than that. It's so much deeper. And so, you know, sometimes we pray for more faith, but I really believe that we need the Lord to just give us a greater understanding of what faith really is in all of its context. Last week we talked about faith is what pleases God. Today we're talking about this. Faith is a sacrifice. Faith is a sacrifice. It says here that these heroes of faith were commended for their faith. That word commended just simply means praised formally or officially. God praises them for their faith. Were they perfect? No. Are you perfect? No. Am I perfect? No. None of us are, but it's that reliance upon God, knowing that His word is yes and amen. That even when I don't see it, He's still working. Even when I don't think it, He's still working. Even when I don't have the goosebumps, He's still working. Faith is the way of life for every believer. Because remember, uh, ch- chapter 10, verse 38, for 38 says, My righteous one will live by faith. What we think, what we say, how we act, how we respond. We don't pull or shrink back as people of faith. Now, I want to take this verse number four, we just read it, but I want to go back to the book of Genesis and read this story real quickly from its original context. The author of of Hebrews is just referring to it. Let's go back to Genesis chapter number four. We are coming back to Hebrews, so you can put a bookmark there, a pencil, a pen, your neighbor's finger if you have one, a neighbor that is. Genesis is the first book of the Old Testament. I'm in chapter number four, beginning to read in verse number one. Adam lay with his wife Eve, and she became pregnant and gave birth to Cain. She said, with the help of the Lord, I have brought forth a man. Later, she gave birth to his brother Abel. Now, Abel kept flocks, and Cain worked the soil. In the course of time, Cain brought some of the fruits of the soil as an offering to the Lord, But Abel brought fat portions from some of the firstborn of his flock. The Lord looked with favor on Abel and his offering. But on Cain and his offering, he did not look with favor. So Cain was very angry and his face was downcast. Then the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? Why is your face downcast? If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must master it. I'm going to stop there for a moment. Simply put, Cain was a farmer. He tilled the ground. He grew stuff. How many of you like to grow stuff? Both of you. Good. Now, no, some of you plant a, a garden. We, 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 you know, in the past, our family has not had the best track record with plants and things like that. Kids, we've kept them. They're, they're doing well. They're thriving. Uh, but, but plants, not so much. But we, we've talked about a garden different times. This year, my wife has some, 
some vegetation growing in pots on our back porch, and we're doing so far, so, so far so good. We're getting some tomatoes, and we have a couple, couple of peppers that are growing, and uh, some other things that haven't grown just yet, but we're still believing that they're going to get a harvest from then. And uh, that, that's kind of exciting for us, but that's what Cain did. Cain was a farmer, and he grew stuff. We don't know all the specifics of what he grew, but it's what he did. And in verse number three, it says that in the course of time, Cain brought some of the fruit. Now, that Hebrew word for fruit is, is perti, and it means a mature, edible product of a plant. So... I don't know what it was. Was it wheat? Was it apples? Was, I don't know what it was, but he had some mature fruit that came from these plants, and he presented it to the Lord. It says in verse number four that Abel tended the flock. He brought the fat portion from, from, the, from some of the firstborn of his flock. That Hebrew word for flock is, is teshon, and it means flock, a small flock, not necessarily in number, but in size of its animal, probably sheep, could be goats. The occupation chosen by Cain and Abel were the natural result of the course of the fall. You can read about that in the prior chapters in the book of Genesis. Adam and Eve ate the fruit, Adam and Eve ate the fruit, and because of that, a curse was put on. And because of that, we have to work the land. We have to earn, if you will. We have to do all of the things that prior to the eating of the fruit, Adam and Eve did not have to do. And so these came as natural course of what happened. And since both the ground and the animal kingdom had been effective, the sheep needed to be tended to and the ground needed to be worked. Contrary to what some have said, there is nothing inherently better about tending sheep than working the ground. I've heard this portion of Scripture uh, uh, preached lots of different times, and some of those times I've heard people say, well, it's better to do the animals than it is to till the ground. Nowhere in the Scripture does it tell us that. Nowhere in the Scripture. There's no scriptural evidence to back that up. No indication that one is more superior to the other. Scripture tells us that Cain brought the fruit of the ground to offer to the Lord, Sometimes we criticize him, and, and, and as we read this portion of Scripture, why? Because it says that the Lord looked at Abel with favor, and it did not look on Cain with favor. But we criticize this poor guy, Cain. Listen, can I tell you something? His offering was beautiful. Well, pastor, that's, that's not what it says. No, no, no. It, it doesn't say that it wasn't beautiful. It just says that God didn't look on it with favor. It doesn't say that the offering wasn't beautiful. Anytime you give something to the Lord, He looks on that favorably. Now, I've lost some of you. Stick with me. Nowhere in it does it say that God rejected Cain's offering. I believe when you and I give to the Lord, He notices it. He appreciates it. When we lock ourselves in worship, I believe God is pleased by that. Why? Because the Scripture tells me that it is. That, or that He is, excuse me. When I give, and I do it with a cheerful heart, Scripture says God enjoys that. He's pleased with that. Abel's offering was the first of the flocks, and it says of the fat. This would have been the richest and best portion of the animal, demonstrating that Abel brought his best to the Lord. He looked to see what he could give, and he saw his flock. That's what he did. The scripture tells us that he tended the flock and as he looked closer, he found a perfect lamb, and he killed it, and he gave it 
to the Lord. Now you can turn to the book of Leviticus. You don't have to do that now. You can maybe jot that down. But in chapter number two, uh, the end of chapter number one, and in chapter number two, it tells uh, uh, God is speaking to Moses here, and it tells all about the offerings and what to give and how to prepare it and what it means. And, and when it talks about the grain offering and the first fruit, it says a portion of that was given to the Lord and it was pleasing to the Lord. I'm paraphrasing. You can read it for yourself. In chapter number 2 and portions of chapter number 3, when it talks about the animal sacrifice when it was made, and again, what to give and how to prepare it, it says this in Leviticus chapter number 3, all the fat was the Lord's. All the fat was the Lord's. Abel gave his best. Now we can sit here and say, well, why aren't the veggies the best? And some of you might say, well, I understand why I don't like veggies. Veggies can't be the best. No, that's not the point of the scripture. Cain made an offering. I don't believe that it was displeasing to the Lord. Abel gave the better offering that found favor in the Lord's eyes. Why? I believe it cost Abel something. Faith is a sacrifice. Now, if you fast forward up to Jesus' time, when they celebrated the Passover, Jewish people would travel, some of them, hundreds of miles to come to Jerusalem to be able to celebrate that. And they didn't travel with their spotless lamb because there was a chance that lamb could get injured. There was a chance something could happen. And then that perfect lamb that, as the scripture set up for them, wasn't going to be perfect any longer. And their offering was going to be rejected. And so when they got to Jerusalem, they had the opportunity to buy the lamb. But they would go a couple of days in advance and they would get that lamb because when they presented it in front of the priest, he wanted to know that there was some sort of connection between the lamb and the family that was presenting it. Now, I'm getting into a lot of deep theological things that we don't have time to fully digest and fully pick apart, but that was what happened. And if he presented to the lamb, the man of the household presented that lamb to the priest, and the priest didn't feel like there was a connection, he would send him back, and they'd have to come back at another time. And you would have up to three chances to stand before the high priest, to stand before the one who you're making the sacrifice to, and, and if that third chance you didn't, you were rejected, and your family's sins were not atoned, to, not atoned for. But if you did, then that lamb was slaughtered, and your family would receive the forgiveness of sin that was desired through that sacrifice. Now, that was implemented Thousands of years after Cain and Abel. But here's a picture of Jesus. Right here in Genesis chapter number 4. All the way in the beginning. Something had to be sacrificed. The blood had to be shed. And the Lord found favor in it. Hebrews 9.22 says, without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. Now, the law had not been established in Genesis chapter number 4, but God is beginning to establish something in Genesis chapter number 4. He's beginning to point you and I to Jesus Long before we read about him in the scripture. Long before we understand God's motives and and, and even his intentions as we read the word. He's painting a picture for you and I. Remember, Cain's offering wasn't horrendous. It just wasn't what God was desiring. Some commentators uh, argue that Abel's, uh, that the reason for Abel's acceptance and Cain's rejection is 
based solely on the sovereign choices of God. And obviously God is sovereign and God can do what he wants, when he wants, how he wants, to whom he wants. And I'm sure the sovereignty of God played a part. But again, everything in Scripture, church, points to Jesus. And even now, in Genesis 4, we're seeing a pointing to Jesus. Why? Because ultimately, the Lamb of God would be born, live a perfect, spotless, blameless life, stand before His accusers, been given a guilty charge after no wrongdoing, beaten, tortured, bruised, marred beyond recognition. The Old Testament prophesies that even his own mother didn't recognize his visage, his physical appearance. And then he died. His blood was shed. His body was beaten so that you and I might have life and have it to the full. Have life and have it more abundant. And God is the same yesterday, He's the same today, and He's the same forever. That means what we read about in His Word, He's still doing today. And if He says He'll do it, you and I need to put our faith that He is going to continue to do it. You know, it's easy to believe the things of God for somebody else. Oh, you've got an ache, you've got a hurt, you've got a physical problem. I know God can heal it in Jesus' name. And, and man, we intercede and we pray and we believe. But then it happens to us and we're like, well, Lord, I don't know if you want to do that in me. Or maybe this is my thorn, God, like Paul had a thorn. No, 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 no. God's not a respecter of persons. If he did it back here in, the, in his word, he'll do it for you or he'll do it today. And if he'll do it for your neighbor, he'll do it for you. And we've got to believe that. Cain gave an offering. Abel made a sacrifice. Abel was not trying to outdo his brother. He was not trying to one-up him. I've got five boys. There's a lot of that in my house. One-up, right? One-up. And the cutest part is they try to do it in, in favor of their mom, you know, like mama's boys. I'm just sitting there, oh, you guys are pathetic. But it's awesome. It's awesome because they just want to be mom's favorite. She didn't have any favorites, but they're trying, and we just let them try because it just benefits her, Right? But that's not Abel's goal. That was not Abel's intention. He was not trying to outdo his brother. He was not trying to one-up him. But there was something inside of him that compelled him to do more. There was something inside of him that said, that's not enough. Go above and beyond. There was something deep inside of Abel that drew him to not just give, but to sacrifice. Because of Abel's better sacrifice, God testifies that Abel was righteous, meaning right standing. Remember, uh, righteous isn't perfect, it's right standing. It says that Abel was righteous. And because of the sacrifice, even though he's been dead 6,000 years... His faith is still speaking to you and I today. Your faith will speak louder than your words. Your faith, if it is living faith, not just in a season, not just in a moment, not just in the tough times, but your faith will speak longer than your words not just louder than your words. And your faith, your faith will carry you far beyond your human effort.
Why? Because faith is an utter reliance on God. Faith has nothing to do with me. It has nothing to do with you. It has nothing to do with your spouse or your kids or your boss or your neighbor, but it has everything to do with God. And if his word says it, we can stand on it, even if it doesn't happen when we want it to, even if it doesn't happen when we think it should, even when we don't see it, even when we don't feel it, even when we don't sense it. Because that's what faith is. That's the power of sacrifice. That's the power of faith. It hurt. It cost him something. Your faith my faith should cost us something. Listen, it costs Jesus everything. Faith is not a Bible verse tattooed on your arm. Faith is not a, a cute song lyric. Faith is not a one line that's on your Instagram, Snapchat, or Facebook bio. Faith is actively dying to yourself and living for Jesus Christ. Just because you say it doesn't mean you're living it. Just because you say it doesn't mean you believe it. Just because you say it doesn't mean you're standing on it. I had a meeting yesterday with a, with a couple of, of people, and we were talking about the idea of being shaken. You know, there's an enemy out there who's trying to destroy and kill, and he's roaming around seeking whom he, whom he may devour. And several times in Scripture, Jesus says, my righteous will not be shaken. Will not be shaken. You and I are not shaken when we're standing on the foundation of Jesus Christ. When we're standing on God's Word. Not seeing, this is God's Word, not seeing how far we can get and still be okay, not, staying close, not just staying close enough so when there's a problem we can hop back over to it. Standing on it. Living on it. Professing it. Proclaiming it. Believing it. Speaking it. Living it. Thinking it. Acting in it. Professing it. Telling others about it. That's when we're not shaken. Listen, stuff happens. Bad news happens. Pandemics happen. But God never changes. And as we live by faith, we begin to realize, though the world crumble around me, I will stand on the firm foundation of Jesus. I love God with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength. I don't have it all figured out yet. I'm still a work in progress. I have my moments, just like Peter, take my eyes off of Jesus and I start sinking. We all have them, but it doesn't change who God is. When I fall short, when I mess up, when I do start to sink, it's not his fault, it's my fault. Something's gone wrong here, not here. Sacrifice hurts. Think of that story of Abraham when he went to sacrifice his son. Yeah, he carried out the act. He was getting ready to do it. But I can't help but imagine there were some shed tears. I can't help to, but imagine there was a pleading with God. I can't. He was a human being about to kill his son. Sacrifice hurts. Anybody can give an offering. But what are you willing to sacrifice for your faith? Will you stand with me as we get ready to close? Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. You say, well, I don't have sheep and I don't have fruit. I don't know what to give. Yeah, you do. You've got your heart. You've got your life. You've got your giftings. You've got your talents. Your desires. Your hurts. You have a family, your family. Would you close your eyes? Again, I don't have it figured out, and I don't have all the answers. But I remember not too long after my wife and I started our family, having a conversation, her and I. And I don't remember all the wording, I don't remember all the details, but it went something like this. You know, we're not going to have these kids forever. Someday they're going to grow up and they're going to move out. They're not our kids. They're his kids. And I can't give you all the details of what the last 20 years have been like. Almost 21. But I know there are lots of shortcomings and failures on my part. A lot of mess-ups, because I lost my, my manual on how to raise them. But by faith, we have done everything that we can do to raise them to be His kids. Maybe that example doesn't apply to you. As you begin to draw closer to the Lord, what's He calling you away from? What's He asking you to let go of? What's He saying, child, son, daughter? That's not for you any longer. That's your sacrifice. It can be as simple as that, church. Yeah, but God, I've done this my whole life. But I don't want that any longer. That's not for you. Listen, that doesn't just happen to new believers, to people that are just calling upon Jesus for the first time. That that happens to us all throughout our journey. God doesn't uh, come into our life and, and, and God doesn't always come into our life and just do a, a clean sweep and transition and, and everything's new and we're, we're just perfect and, and, and wonderful. No, a lot of times it's a process. It's a peeling off of this layer. It's a peeling off of that layer. It's a peeling off of this thing. It's a peeling off of that thing. I'm in a peeling process right now personally. It's uncomfortable. It's going to cost me something. What is it for you? God's pleased when we give an offering, but He desires everything. 
He desires every ounce of who you are. He desires every fiber of your being. And if he doesn't have every, if he doesn't have every fiber, then there's still a sacrifice to be made. Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, sometimes our sacrifice hurts because we give up something. We, we give that painful portion. We, we, we give that thing that, that, that we have held on to so tightly. But Lord, today we do it in faith. Because we desire more of you, God. We don't do it for the favor. We don't do it for the blessing. We don't do it for any other reason except you're worthy. So, Father, we worship you this morning. We worship you this morning. And Father, I pray that even in just a, a few moments as we dismiss and, and, and then we're going to leave this building and get in our cars and we're going to go wherever it is that we're going today, Lord, that what you're doing right now in our hearts, it doesn't end when we say amen, but Lord, that you'll continue to work and you'll continue to move and you'll continue to, to stretch us and, and, and grow us. You'll continue, Lord, to ask us for that sacrifice. We haven't arrived when we say, come into my life. The journey just begins. And we continue on that path until we're reunited with our maker. Church, Jesus is coming back. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, right now, in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, continue to move and work. Continue to draw. Father, expand our understanding of faith. Because you said without faith, it's impossible to please you. We give you praise and we give you thanks. We worship you, mighty God. And we pray, Father, as we get ready and leave this place, whether it's watching online or whether it's leaving the physical building, Lord, that you'd go before your people, lead, guide, and direct them in all that they say and do. And Father, help the righteous, those who are in right standing with God, to be men and women and boys and girls who live by faith. We'll thank you and we'll praise you in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody said, amen, amen, amen. hallelujah, you may be seated.